Christ. It looks like we might be having a technical issue. We're good? Okay. And we'll get started right now. Oh, Lord, open my lips. Responsibly, Psalm 148. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. 
Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing his will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God Most High, by your word you created a wondrous universe, and through your spirit you breathed into it the, light, the breath of life. Accept creation's hymn of praise from our lips, and let the praise that is sung in heaven resound in the heart of every creature on earth, to the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sing together our hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing, hymn number 144 in our green hymn. to one another and to everyone. 
Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. I put you under oath before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you all from our God and Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now we've all probably heard this hypothetical question asked before. If you knew that today would be your last day alive, what would you do? Most people answer this question from a stance of fear and loss. And so they'll say, I'll go to this restaurant, I'll eat this kind of food, I'd want to visit this place, I would want to visit this person or meet this celebrity, and the list goes on. People answer this way because they imagine that they, after they die, will never have another chance to eat such delicacies or meet such celebrity or see such sights ever again. The Christian, however, would answer that question in a very different way. The Christian answer would be like what Paul says to the Thessalonians in chapter 5. Respect and esteem one another, and admonish those not pulling their weight, be at peace, seek to do good, always rejoice, give thanks in all circumstances, hold fast to what is good. Paul's answer sounds very, well, it sounds very unremarkable, doesn't it? It's not that Paul is unconcerned about the kingdom that is to come, but it is because Paul, as it is for the Christian, he doesn't mourn what might be lost, what things someone didn't get to check off their bucket list before they kicked the bucket, what places of dust someone should have visited before they bite the dust. Instead, the Christian seeks to make many things good in this old world that is passing away knowing that death has already come. Death has come to Jesus Christ, the new Adam, and death has already come to the Christian in baptism. In baptism you died and your life is now hidden in Christ, as Paul says elsewhere. But just as surely as death has come to you already, so also has life come to you. Jesus is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. And since you are not only attached to Jesus in his death through baptism, you are even more so attached to his life in baptism. And what does that mean? Well, this means that the end has come to you already in Christ, and also the new creation, the new day has already dawned upon this world, has dawned upon you. There really isn't anything left for you to do but to love as Christ loved, walking the path of obedience. Paul's instruction to the church in Thessalonica 2,000 years ago, and Paul's instruction to you now in the year 2020 is very practical. Since there are no more ultimate plans to be made, and certainly no ultimate plans that you can make, since Jesus will return one day soon, since we have resurrection joy waiting for the chosen people of God, since there are pleasures forevermore at the right hand of God, the most important thing a Christian is called to do is to be about the business of their daily work for their neighbor in need. Again, listen to the instructions Paul gives to a church that was full of worry about what would happen at the end of all things. Paul says, respect and esteem one another, admonish those not pulling their weight, be at peace, seek to do good, rejoice, and always give thanks in every circumstance. Paul doesn't say to hoard up all your stuff, buying toilet paper by the truckload. Paul doesn't say live your life cowering in fear of the day of judgment. 
Paul doesn't say follow after conspiracy theories about viruses. But what Paul does say is this, is to simply to be the Christian that God the Father has called and made you to be. Since you are in Christ and Christ is in you, don't worry about the supposed signs of the times. Simply trust and know that God is good. God is almighty and God is working out his good purposes in all things, even in the midst of pandemics and quarantine. The end of this old world, the end of everything that you may hold dear, has come in the work and the person of Jesus Christ. And this is freedom, folks. Freedom from the jealousy that afflicts so many people as they look at the lives of others and wonder where they went wrong. Wondering why God hasn't given them that life instead of the life that they have now. Freedom from resentment that destroys marriages and families. Freedom from the never-ending comparison of people that people are always making for of one to another. And also freedom from endless speculation of what could happen at the final judgment. In Jesus' death and resurrection, the judgment has come. Humanity is both indicted by his bloody body, but also acquitted through faith by his glorious resurrection. Because the end has come to you in Christ already, how then will you live your life? Because you have been baptized in his death, attached to the body, his body, the church, you now await the gift of everlasting life, the new creation, a gift that has already been planted in you by the Holy Spirit. And because of that, it's time for the Christian to do what Adam and Eve were meant to do many years ago. Be fruitful and multiply. Care and govern over creation. Be your brother's keeper. The Christian life, after all, isn't terribly complicated. Actually, it's quite mundane and ordinary. Listen again to what Paul says. Respect and esteem one another. Admonish those not pulling their weight. Be at peace. Seek to do good. Always rejoice, giving thanks in all circumstances. It might not look like what some people would, what some people would call spiritual, but it is what God expects and desires of his beloved children. This is the will of God for you, as Paul says. This way of life is what Paul calls in the letter to the Romans a presentation of your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Paul calls this your spiritual worship in that same verse of Romans 12, verse 1. And just imagine if unbelievers saw Christians continuing to urge the faint-hearted, both online and in person, to be full of courage and be full of conviction when so many people's personal well of hope seems to be running dry. Just imagine if all the unbelievers saw during this time of pandemic was Christians rejoicing and giving thanks no matter the circumstances. And people of God, this is what we have been trying to emulate and, and do here at Zion and also with our ministry at Bethany. We are not pie-in-the-sky kind of people. We are down-to-earth people. We are down-to-earth people because God has come down to earth in Jesus Christ. And Christ will return down to this earth to not only judge the living and the dead, consummate his kingdom, and display his glory for all creation to see, but he will also bless the work of his people. Paul reminded the church in Corinth with words very similar to the ones that we heard in 1 Thessalonians 5, when Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 15. My beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your work in the Lord is not in vain. People of God, know that even now your labor is not in vain. And may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son.
single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise. That amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. O Lord of life, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you gave the holy apostles many gifts and commanded them to feed your flock. Inspire all pastors to preach your word diligently and your people to receive it willingly, that finally we may receive the crown of eternal glory, O Lord of life. Hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, we pray that we who have been redeemed from the old life of sin by our baptism into the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, may be renewed in your Holy Spirit to live in righteousness and true holiness. O Lord of life, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, comfort of the sad and strength of those who suffer, let the prayers of your children, who are in any trouble, rise to you. To everyone in distress, grant mercy, grant relief, grant refreshment. O Lord of life, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have set the solitary in families. We commend to your care all the homes where your people live. Keep them, we pray, free from bitterness, from the thirst for personal victory, from the pride of self. Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, moderation, patience, and godliness. O Lord of life, hear our prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, your dear Son, that you should have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and that I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Spirit, bless and preserve you. Oh.